Singapore is struggling to limit the number of coronavirus cases coming from abroad. It has reported over 500 cases, and most of its new infections are imported. The government announced tighter border controls after it reported its first fatalities. So now, for the very latest, we're joined by Naima Pratin. Good to see you there, Naima. Tell us more about the measures Singapore has taken and how they're working. Yep, so Singapore has been praised internationally for the measures that it has put in place to stop the spread of COVID-19. Now, the first case came to the island nation at the end of January, and immediately a strong uh, tracing, uh, detection, and isolation framework was put in place. And this was something that was developed during the SARS outbreak. So Singapore was well placed to handle this kind of situation, and they did manage to keep community transmissions relatively low. The issue now has been over the past few weeks, there's been a spike. As you mentioned, most of these cases have been imported cases, and most of these cases have been brought in by returning citizens or permanent residents coming back from uh, the new epicenters of the outbreak, so Europe, uh, America. As such, the Singapore government has uh, restricted or tightened its travel restrictions, I should say. So tourists are now no longer to enter, uh, able to enter the country. They're not allowed to transit either. Only certain work pass holders that provide essential services are allowed to re-enter.、Uh, Singaporean citizens and, of course, permanent residents, long-term pass holders are allowed to re-enter. But everybody now entering the country must go under a 14-day stay-home notice. So the idea is to isolate these people just in case some of them. Uh, carry the virus and to stop more community transmission.、Uh, on Friday, the government also launched its new Trace Together app.、Uh, this app is going to notify people if they've come in close contact for an extended period of time with COVID-19 patients, and it's going to be part of Singapore's tracing methods. The government have also said that they'll allow this to be open source, so other countries, governments around the world, will be able to use this technology if they want to stop the spread of the outbreak. It's similar to technology we've already. Seen Seen, uh, being used in in South Korea or in China, and Singapore Airlines says it will cut capacity by 96 percent and ground most of its entire fleet. I mean, how will this impact Singapore's aviation industry as a whole? Yep. So the Singapore Airline Group have already said that this is the biggest challenge they faced in their existence. As you said, 96% of capacity has been cut. Now, Singapore Airline Group is in a unique predicament here because, of course, Singapore is a tiny country. There is no domestic demand to fall back on. There's no domestic flights here, so all of their international travel is now going to be affected by these travel restrictions. Singaporean residents are also being told now to not travel overseas.、Uh, management has said that they'll be taking pay cuts. They're also in talks with unions about their staff, but it is believed about 10,000 people will be affected, including cabin crew, of course. Now, previous to this announcement,、uh, Singapore Airlines staff had already been offered voluntary unpaid leave.、Uh, the company is also in talks with airline manufacturers to try and uh, delay uh, the delivery of new airlines and therefore defer payment for a while to try and shore up some liquidity.、Um, but of course, this is an issue faced by. The、uh, industry internationally, as、uh, countries tighten their borders, so airline bodies are now calling for governments to step in to provide aid,、uh, intervention. Well, thank you so much for the latest from Singapore. Nima Pratin joining us live there. Appreciate it.